Hello again, Joe the CRM chap here with another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. This is the developer's exam for those interested in working with the Power Platform or with Dynamics 365, uh, formerly known as Dynamics CRM. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the three different available process types that we've got in the system, um, Power Automate Flows. Now you may know these under a previous name, they were until very recently referred to as Microsoft Flow. And what they let you do is they let you execute potentially quite complex processes or workflows um, that can not, ne not just necessarily work with data in your current business system, whether it's common data service or SQL Server or something else, but also then go off and do any manner of different things in different systems. It could be that maybe, for example, you want to kick off a MailChimp um, email campaign, you want to post something to Twitter each time something happens. With Power Automate, you've got a whole range of different connectors that make it really, really easy. Uh, to get different systems talking to each other you know, without very much effort at all. And really when you're looking at any sort of complex integration piece involving the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, Power Automate is one of those tools you, you should really be considering from the outset because it can save you a lot of time and effort. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build out a Power Automate flow from start to finish, a very, just a very basic simple one. We'll talk through as we're sort of doing it, okay, what the various features are as part of it. Then hopefully by the end of this video you, you're confident enough to then go in and start creating a Power Automate flow yourself. So as you can see on the screen here, we're in a, the solution that we've been working through as part of some of the previous videos. We've created our solution in our common data service environment uh, to basically manage all our customizations as we work through them. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to new up here and click on flow. This is going to open us up into the flow portal. And we're going to be presented with essentially just an empty, um, empty window where we can start building our flow from scratch. The first thing we need to do as part of this, we need to define, okay, what's going to actually kick off our flow in the first place? And we've got a, we've got some choice around that. You know, you could have it so that, okay, whenever a new record is created in our system, that will be the trigger point for things to start kicking off. We could have it so that, okay, every every time at 10 a.m. in the morning, um, we, um, you know, kick off this flow. Or finally, we could have it so that the flow is just manually, ex manually executed. So it could be that, you know, within the portal or within the, Power Automate mobile app. We just have a little button on there that we can press each time, and then that will then kick off the um, the flow accordingly. Um, so in today's video, we're going to connect up first of all to our common data service environment. Uh, we're going to type it up into here. Just give it a second to load, and then we can see we've got two actually two common data service connectors on here. Um, so in most cases, you're probably going to want to go for the one that's been flagged as the current environment um, trigger point. Um, this will make sure that your flow can be added to a solution and more easily moved across to different environments without any sort of major hassle. For situations where you need to connect up to common data service databases on other Office 365 or Azure Active Directory tenants, uh, this one will let you do that without any sort of major limitation, but it will mean that your flow is very is tied to your current CDS environment and you will have more difficulty moving it across to different um, uh, you know, different staging, test, or production environments. If that's um, if that's how your process is. Um, so, for the purposes of today's video, we're going to use the current environment one just to make things nice and easy. And then we get a single trigger act, catch all trigger action on here, which we're going to click. As you can see on here, and as with many other different triggers that we've got in the application, you have to specify a few details first of all. Um, so, in this case, we need to say, okay, well, you know, when, you know, which message in the application is this going to trigger? Uh, we're going to say, okay, whenever a, a whenever it's a sort of a create operation is sort of performed. We need to define, okay, which target entity we want it to affect. Um, in this case, we're gonna select the accounts entity. Then finally, scope. So for those who have worked previously with dynamic CRM workflows, this should look fairly familiar. A scope just indicates, okay, in terms of what privilege level, you know, the user running the Power Automate flow, um, you know, will be able to sort of run that in. in uh, for the purpose of this example, we're just gonna select organization for that. We've also got some additional filtering attributes that we can do. So, okay, we can, you know, make sure that the flow only fires when an account is created with this field value. Um, we're just going to leave that as blank today. We're not going to worry too much about that. And the next thing we're going to do is, so we want to have it so that whenever a new account record is created, it basically sends out an, an email to us. So we click on new step down here. Uh, we're going to type in, first of all, Outlook down here. Uh, and we can see we've got down here the send an email. And we're just gonna send out an email using our um, the current connection on the tenant uh, to my email address. We're just gonna send myself just a quick email just to basically inform that, okay, yeah, the, we've got a brand new um, 
con uh, account record that's been created on here. Maybe we want to go in and check it further. So add in our email address, a new account. And then what we want to do is we want to um, you know, add on, you know, feed through a couple of details about the account that we've created. So if we just start typing first of all, it's been created with the name. Um, and at this point, what we've got the ability to do is we've got the dynamic content so we can use um, feed in information that's been captured at a previous action step into our into our current one on here. So for example, we can say, okay, um, I want to put the account name um, into the email and then that will always be fed through and always be dynamic in terms of its whenever it's fed through. And we can see we've got access to basically every single field on the account entity on here, which is really good. Um, um, so with the name, so a new account record has been created with the name account name, um, date, time for this is, and then what we can also do as well, we've got a very powerful expression based language within Power Automate Flows that we can use. Um, we can very quickly sort of get an indication in terms of what functions are available as part of that by clicking on the expressions bar up here. And we can see we've got a whole range of different functions on here, you know, far too many to cover as part of a single uh, as part of a single video um, but what I want to do here is we want to basically just okay it's a bit a bit of a pointless thing to do but just to show you how it all works we're going to put inject in the current UTC um, date and time into the email so if we scroll further down on here we go to our date and time functions down here go to UTC now click on that down there it's just a very simple function that you don't need to specify any parameters as part of that uh, we can just click OK at this point and we can see we've had our um, expression added into the email and then that will now process each time when we do that. We've got some additional options that we want that we um, can specify down here. We're not going to worry too much about them at this particular point. Um, we need to give our flow a name, uh, our power to make flow a name first of all. So we're just going to call this MB400 uh, email. At this point we're going to save our, save our flow. Let's give it a minute just to save properly. Okay, so that will, that will save now. Then the next step that you'll probably want to do is you just want to start testing this to make sure it's working as expected. Uh, before that though, you may just want to quickly just use the flow checker up here to basically um, see if there's any potential issues that Microsoft have detected with your flow before you start pushing it out. This can be quite useful. Maybe you know, it could be that you know, you've not specified a setting correctly. There could be potentially an error in there that you want to look at. So always give that a quick look over. Uh, but because there's no issues with this particular flow on here, we want to be, start testing it. Um, this is perhaps one of the best things about Power Automate Flows in that you, you know, you've got some very easy to use and powerful testing capabilities, meaning that you can very quickly check to see whether your flow is behaving as expected or not. Um, and this is done by either sort of, okay, performing the trigger action yourself and then verifying it follows through accordingly. Or alternatively, if you have process data already using this flow, you can repeat that again and see how based on different conditions, different data feeding through into the flow, how it sort of affects it, and maybe you can catch any potential issues as part of that. So what we're gonna to do today is we're just gonna do perform the trigger action ourselves manually. We're gonna save and test that. And what's gonna happen now is the flow is gonna sort of go into a sort of a, you know, a ready to sort of start stage. It's expecting us to go in and start our trigger action. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to actually go on and actually create an account record for um, the flow to kick off. So if you've watched the previous videos, one of the previous videos in the series, you'll remember this little power up on here that we created previously. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a brand new record from scratch today. Uh, we're going to call this our uh, MB400 uh, MB400 flow test. Uh, we'll just call that test town. We'll just give it a number. Save that down there. That's been committed to the database now. We can see that in the app. When we go back to our flow in here, we should see that, yeah, our flow's run successfully. At this point, we can then um, see at a high level, okay, okay, how long it's taken each particular step to run successfully. We can expand and go in further and actually see, okay, what data has been fed in, what data has come out of each particular step. This could be quite useful for identifying any issues or problems. And we can see down here that it's basically it's sent out our, our email correctly and we can see the body text okay it's injected the name of the account successfully and also we've got our current date timestamp as well and if i go across to my emails now as well we should be able to see 
brilliant. Okay, yeah, the emails come through successfully. So even though you are testing at this particular point, you know, keep in mind that any operation that you do, it's going to potentially you know, send out emails or create records or do things like that. So take that into consideration when you are testing your flows potentially. So our flow is pretty much ready to go at this point. Um, you know, we can, and it will be added into our solution because we're using the current environment uh, trigger. We'll go back on there and just confirm that in a few minutes. But it's worth just quickly just talking about, okay, well, what other properties have you got on a particular flow that might be particularly useful for you to something just to bear in mind. So I've gone back onto the property screen for this particular flow. We can see we've got some useful top level information on here about previous runs, what connections it uses, and owners and stuff like that. Uh, we can go back in and edit our flow if we want to by clicking this button up here. Alternatively, we can do things like sharing, so we can share out the flow to other users in the tenant, give them permission and access to update and use that if they so want to. We can save a new copy of it or send a copy of it to somebody else, delete it entirely. We've got the ability, if we, th if we think we've created okay, really, um, a really good flow that maybe other people could benefit from, we can submit it as a template to Microsoft and then they'll look at putting it onto the template gallery which is available down here and then from there other people can then download and start using it. And then finally what you've done, you've got a range of very powerful analytics um, information that, exposed, that is exposed out by your flow. Um, as you'd expect it's the power platform, it's using Power BI visuals to power that. Um, the data at the moment hasn't, hasn't updated just yet for us but what we'll be able to do through here is basically see okay, the amount of errors this flow is having each particular day and also most importantly the different uses as well. So at this point our flow is pretty much ready to go and if we return now into our solution down here we can see the flow is now included in our solution and because we've been using the current environment connector as well it's going to get included and pushed out whenever we do whenever we want to get this out into our you know test or production environments accordingly so as, as this video is hopefully demonstrating you know F flow is a really easy tool to start using it's not something that's going to require a great deal of effort um, but likewise as well, you've got some very powerful capabilities through the sort of the expression language, through uh, the various different connectors that are on there to do some quite amazing things. Things which, you know, previously through, you know, C Sharp or through a plugin or custom workflow assembly in Dynamics CRM would take you far too long to complete. So always consider Flow or Power Automate Flows as part of your project early on. Test them to the very limit and see whether they're going to be useful or not. Um, you may you may find yourself being surprised and end up going for something which you think okay um, I never would have used this in a million years you know certainly that's what I found when using the product so okay that's that pretty much wraps it up for today's video so I hope this has been really useful in showing you what you can do with Power Automate Flows um, if you've got any questions or comments regarding the, the, this video or the series so far you can leave them below uh, or certainly you can contact me on Twitter as well I'll be more than happy to hear from you um, so yeah so look out for another video hopefully coming soon take care Thanks.